welcome everybody to our graduate recruitment webinar um, in practice in partnership with Best Practice Network and Kids Planet. So it's a very exciting time to be joining early years. I'm sure you'll all have seen in the news that there is a huge amount of government funding, 180 million pounds, as you can see on here, which is being put in to lots of different programmes. And the aim of that is to try to really support and boost early years practice, thinking about the impact of the pandemic. And you'll see here right at the top of the list, we've got early years initial teacher training, which we're going to talk to you about today. So some of those findings come from the Education Recovery Report, which was published by Ofsted. And that was highlighting lots of things again, that you'll have seen and you'll have been aware of in the news. So some of those continued effects on the pandemic that we are still seeing. And for anybody who is reading on early years or has worked in early years, will know that we're very much trying to prioritise those prime areas of learning at the moment. So we're still focusing on communication and language, personal, social and emotional development and physical development in our settings to try to really improve children's outcomes in those areas. There has been, again, an increase we've seen in numbers of children who might need to be referred for additional support and children who were not getting identified as early. And that's why our role is so crucial as early years teachers. There's been other things reported, as you can see on the slide, in terms of an impact on children's behaviour, things like sharing and turn taking and listening skills, also a lack in those physical skills, um, particularly from that period of coronavirus where children didn't have access to playgrounds or outside spaces and they were therefore missing out on those physical opportunities. And also looking at what impact that has when those children are ready to move on to school and making sure that we can make the biggest difference at the beginning. Um, it's good to see that early years is in the headline for another reason as well. So obviously we have the Duchess of Cambridge, who is very much focused on her early years campaign at the moment. And she's hoping again to raise that public awareness of why it's so important and so significant that we support and promote children's learning in those first five years of their life. So you can see there the quote that she's um, been involved in recently. And if we're going to try and create a healthier and happier society for those future generations, it's so important that we acknowledge how unique and how vital these first five years of life really are. So it's great that we've got that government funding, we've got that impact in the news, and it's a really good time to be joining and being an early years teacher. We know that early years teachers make a big difference. So in terms of graduate leaders, there's lots of research that shows that it's those graduates that help to raise the quality of children's experiences and also the practice of others. Something that we put a big focus on in our EYITT programme is about leading and supporting other practitioners. Again, to make sure that that everyday practice is seeing big improvements and we're seeing how that impacts on children's lives. So how do we know that and what sort of research is available that backs up what we're looking at? So the Sutton Trust report in 2020, which we've mentioned on there, talks about those differences in gaps in terms of children's outcomes. So unfortunately, if we think about the poorest children or those disadvantaged children, they can already be 11 months behind their better off peers before they even start school. And unfortunately, all the evidence shows that that gap actually tends to keep on widening. So it isn't something that we manage to close or we manage to claw back. We had started to see a slight improvement, but unfortunately, that gap has widened again due to the impact of the pandemic. Um, we know that good early years education has got that power to push forward and improve 
children's outcomes. And the thing that's most vital in that is having a good quality workforce. And that's why, again, studying for your early years teacher status can make that massive difference. We've also got on there the Department for Education Social Mobility Action Plan. And the Department for Education have set themselves a very ambitious target that they want to have the number of children who are leaving reception class without the right literacy and numeracy skills that they need. So that target is in place for 2028 to try to make a difference through lots of those interventions that we can put in place. We've also had a new white paper in 2022. And one of the statements on there is that we are aiming to have excellent teachers um, and that every, ch every child will be taught by an excellent teacher by 2030. So we can really see where we're driving forward with this and why it would be a fantastic time to come and get your qualification. We are early years teachers that are specialists in early childhood development, and that will give you that recognition for working with the very youngest children in terms of babies, toddlers, preschool age, and into the foundation stage as they progress into school. So completing your EYITT will give you that level six, and it will give you that specialist specialism in not to five. Just to be clear, this is early years teacher status and it's not qualified teacher status. So if you are wanting to or aiming to work with children in that primary age range, then it would be qualified teacher status that you were looking at and you would have the option to look at different age groups, for example, three to seven year olds or five to 11 year olds. So who can come and work towards their early years teacher status? So we want to make sure that anybody who has got the passion, anybody who is committed to um, working and supporting children's development can have that opportunity. So at Best Practice Network, we run two routes. So it may be that you are a graduate and you are already working within the early years foundation stage. It could be that you're wanting to come to the early years sector completely new, or it may be that you're currently studying for an early childhood studies degree and you're going to be graduating in the summer. So why would you want to train with us? Um, we're very, very proud to say that Best Practice Network is the largest provider of EYITT currently. We have um, been working with early years training for a long, long time. So we did start running early years professional status as it was back then. And then when it changed to EYITT, again, we have continued to develop the programme and keep on offering this programme. We are proud to say that we have a very successful pass rate and we put that down to the fact that we have a blended programme that has a combination of face-to-face -face sessions and some online learning, and you will be given your own dedicated personal tutor who will support you throughout the programme. So here's a little overview of the different routes that we offer. Now, because um, on this webinar, we're going to be talking about yourselves being employed at a Kids Planet setting, you would be focusing on that graduate employment route or GEB route, as we say for short. Now, something that's absolutely fantastic going back to the funding is that this is a fully funded programme by the DfE. And as you can see on there, your employer will also receive £7,000 in employer incentive. As part of the programme, you will be required to complete a placement. If you were based in a Kids Planet setting, which is covering babies, toddlers and preschool, it would just be one extra placement, which would typically be 30 days. And that's split into 20 days in reception and 10 days engagement in Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2. In some circumstances, we may say that we need to do a third placement as an additional placement to cover a particular age group or perhaps because you might want to be looking at a particular um, approach in early years. 
And you can see on there that we tend to have at least one training session a month face to face. So what does the programme look like for you if you are accepted and you are offered a place? There is a mixture, as I said before, of face-to-face -face training days, which are completed in different venues across the country, and also remote learning. So you will be expected to complete some study by yourself in your own time. And to support you with that, we have a fantastic online resource library called Canvas, where you'll be able to access different modules, you'll be able to look at articles and video links to support you with the different areas that you're focusing on. You will have the support of a personal tutor as soon as you're on the programme and all the way through. And that personal tutor will come to observe you in your setting. They will be there to assess your work, to support you with any queries that you've got all the way through the programme. You'll also have a setting mentor within your Kids Planet setting, and that mentor will be there to observe you every week and also to share their early years expertise with you, um, to set you targets and to really support you on your journey towards those teaching standards. You will also have a lead trainer in your setting, and that person is responsible for supporting you with accessing the training and also helping you to map out those different requirements that you might have for placement. For everybody, you have your own individualised plan and you have your own learning platform where you can share and upload your work. You can type your reflections and your mentor and your personal tutor will be able to work on that with you together. So that's just a nice overview of the structure of the programme and what it looks like. So we would always start off in our induction phase. You would have some pre-induction training where we can share with you all the different systems, what the programme will look like as we go through the year. You would start off by completing what we call our needs analysis and subject knowledge audit so we can find out your strengths and your own areas for development. It might be that you haven't yet had much experience with phonics, and that might be an area that we want to pick up on and work with you to develop. You will be given a separate IT induction so that you can learn how to use the online resources and also Mosaic, which is what we use for tracking progress. And you'll also be asked to complete an Elevate My Maths um, module, which will help to make sure you've got all those skills in place that you need to for your maths knowledge. Across each term, there will be training days. There'll be slightly different focuses. You can see that sometimes it's about target setting or having a review of your learning. We also complete a leadership plan where you're able to identify different ways that you might lead and support others. And then we do have one reflective account which is due in, in your final term, which is a written piece um, of an assignment, which is marked at level six. An exciting part of the programme is that you get to complete different learning sequences in different age groups. So you'll get to plan activities, assess them, look at research that might fit in with different approaches and see how that affects the children's progress. And at the end of each term, we have an end of term review. And throughout, as you can see at the bottom, you have visits from your personal tutors and lots of meetings with your mentors so that we can discuss your ongoing progress. Then towards the end of the programme, that's when we come to our final assessment. So we do a summative assessment against the early years teacher standards. And then we also complete a recommendation to put you forward and we would also put together a transition plan to support you in your next year working in early years. So what's the role of the mentors? As I said, you will be given your own mentor within your setting and that is somebody who we would identify um, with your setting and with the lead trainer as somebody who is an expert in early years and they will help to have those discussions with you and support you to reflect on your own practice. 
It's somebody who can share with you their different experiences in early years and their own expertise. We want to make sure that the mentors have a good understanding of the curriculum and the early years teacher standards. So they will be focusing on what we call our core curriculum themes. So we'll be thinking about how you can develop your subject knowledge, your pedagogy, your behaviour management with children and also your professional behaviours in terms of working in partnership with parents or perhaps working with other professionals. They will be observing you every week so that you can have feedback on your practical teaching and we can gather evidence again towards those early years standards. And your mentor will be given a full induction from Best Practice Network, as well as mentor training each term. And also there are dropping sessions that your mentor can pop into if they've got any questions. So placements, we had a quick look at that on the overview. And just to reinforce that, in order to meet those early years teacher training requirements, we have to show that you've spent some time in each of those age groups from birth to five. And we have to evidence that that has taken place in at least two different settings. So your main setting would be Kids Planet and your extra setting is likely to be your school placement. In some circumstances, as I said before, we may require an extra one, but that's on a case by case basis. And the bottom bullet point there is if you were on the different route, if you were graduate entry, those trainees need to cover a total of 120 days across the course of the programme. So how do we assess your early years teacher status? It's very much formative as we go through the programme and that builds and leads into that summative assessment at the end of the programme. So your formative assessment is your observations from your mentor, your observations from your personal tutor, your reflective account, which you write at level six, your sequences of work that you develop in each age group, and how you progress towards your termly targets that your personal tutor and mentor will set for you. All of those things together will help to demonstrate how you master the EYITT curriculum and provide evidence towards those standards. So at the end of the programme, your personal tutor and mentor will make a judgment and they will say that you will meet those teacher standards and put you forward to exam board and recommend you for your early years teacher status. So what would you need in terms of applying for an EYITT place? So you do need to have a degree. You do need to prove that you have got a GCSE in English, Maths and Science. And those are all at a grade C or grade four or above or a recognised equivalent, which we'll come on to in a moment. You do need to prove that you have the right to work and also to study in the UK. You need to demonstrate your competence in spoken and in written English. You must have a satisfactory DBS check in place. And if you're on the GE route, there's a couple of extra things in terms of health and physical capacity to teach. So you may be thinking you're in the situation where you have some of those things, but you don't have everything you need to be eligible at this point. If you're in the situation where you are missing a GCSE, where you would like to take an equivalency test, we're in a very fortunate position that we managed to broker a really good deal with equivalencytesting.com. So as you can see on here, we have a special code that you can use and you can apply to them for the subject that you would like to cover and you will receive a discount on your equivalency. There are two different options. So as you can see here, it may be that you feel you're ready to take the exam and you don't need to do the course. So with that option, as you can see, it's not about revision, it's just about taking the exam. With the second option, you can 
do your preparations for the exam, which comes across in different homework assignments. And then when you're ready to take the exam, you would sit your examination. So Jill, if it's okay, I will hand back over to you so you can talk through the benefits of working for Kids Planet. Yeah, thanks, Helen. Um, so yeah, for working for Kids Planet, so we have vacancies across our 150 nurseries across England. So we have a vac vacancies in every single one of those nurseries. So if you go onto the Kids Planet website and look uh, where our nurseries are, then you can sort of locate the closest one to you and, and see um, which is the best nursery for you to get to. So we have been working with Best Practice Network for four years now to, uh, to deliver the earliest um, teacher training. So we have mentors in place and we will support you right through that journey ensuring that you can attend all your teaching sessions and support you to secure the extra placement that Helen mentioned before. So we have a, a wide range of sort of, um, you know, um, benefits of working for the Kids Planet as well. So we have a, a competitive salary package of trainee early years teachers, which is 21,000, and that will be enhanced when you complete your early years teacher uh, training status as well. And that will be negotiable then on your experience and um, what, what setting you in type of thing. So we will discuss that with you individually. You will get childcare discount if you've got any children of your own. So um, so you can, um, that is it, as a good saving as you can imagine as well if you're working in kids plant nurseries we have an employee assistant program as well um we have a discount website and we have a long service award and also a referral scheme which is outlined on the slide there as well also working for kids planet you get free breakfast snacks tea and coffee which is always a nice thing as well and we also have lucy who's our dedicated uh, well-being manager who can support your well-being and mental health through your journey as well so plenty of benefits there um across the kids planet group um i'm also going to uh, uh, pass you on to Sam, who is going to tell you what it's like to, to be an early years teacher at Kids Planet, who's been uh, that in that role herself and is now working at the Academy of Teachers Assessor, supporting and mentoring other early years teacher trainers as well. So, um, Sam, can I pass over to you, please? Yeah, of course. So, um, I was just looking at some of the questions that were coming through as well. Um, so, as an early years teacher um, in a nursery, there's a lot of similarities to being a teacher in a school, which is what I did before. Um, I came across Kids Planet um, and there's a lot of differences as well and I think one of the ones Helen actually mentioned earlier so you get a lot of opportunity to support uh, your colleagues in the setting uh, and you get a really nice sort of well-rounded view of what's going on in the whole nursery so it means you can really support the foundations of those children's education and then build upon them as you support them to get ready to go to school as well uh, and I feel like because you're doing that you feel very much the influence that you have on their first five years uh, which uh, Helen talked about as well and um, you also end up with a really good relationship with the parents um, and carers that obviously support the children that you're caring for as well and again you get a lot more opportunity to develop those skills to be able to offer sort of additional support and training to those parents if there's areas that they're not sure about and um, that sometimes you don't get working as a teacher in a school as well and um, you as a teacher myself in kids planet i worked in the preschool uh, room which so i was working with children from three uh, until just before their fifth birthdays as they went off to school um, but you can be placed um, in the other rooms and some of the nurseries are split slightly differently with different age groups in each room as well. Um, but you still let, get to look at that sort of overall picture of the children's progress. So even if you're working in the preschool, I would still often sort of support in the other rooms as well. Uh, as part of my teaching role, I was a mentor for best practice as well. So I supported uh, the teacher that actually took my role in the nursery when I moved to the training academy uh, to go through uh, best practice program um, as a mentor and doing all the things that sort of Helen talked about within her presentation. <clears throat> Thanks, Sam. That's really, yeah, really definitely. helpful. Um, so um, I was going to say, um, uh, to apply for one of these roles, just to clarify, uh, we need to check eligibility with Best Practice Network first, that you're eligible to come onto the EYITC programme, and then you can express your interest to Kids Planet, and we will interview you then for one of the roles at Kids Planet. So first and foremost, you need to check eligibility with um, Best Practice. Is there anything you want to add on that, Helen? 
Thank you, Jill. That's great. So I think we have got it on one of the next slides. If you are interested um, and you are passionate, this is a fantastic opportunity for you because as Jill and Sam have both said, um, we've worked with Kids Planet for a long time. They've got so many fantastic settings. Not only are you getting your qualification, but you're learning and seeing that fantastic progress firsthand um, in, in terms of having a job with them as well at the same time. So it's a fantastic opportunity. Um, so if you do feel that you are eligible or equally, if you have any questions, you can drop them into the chat box for us now um, and we will answer. Or again, we will get back to you via email. Um, if you want to apply for a place, the easiest way to do that is to go onto our website. So go on to bestpractice.co.uk forward slash EYITT. You'll see lots of information on there about the programme, some of the slides that I've shared with you today in terms of the programme structure, what you will need in terms of your qualifications. And there is a button that you can click on there, which will help you to apply for a place. Um, there are two stages to that application. So you start off by filling in your personal details, a little bit of information about you, and then we will ask you to upload your documents. So if you've got your degree certificate, if you've got your GCSE certificates, and the team here will check that everything is in place and we will offer you an interview. Something important to note, because it is a special opportunity, is to make sure, please, that you enter the Kids Planet partner code. So what we're going to do is send out a set of instructions to everybody who has attended today to help you to follow what the process will be for your application. If you have any queries at all um, following on from today, please feel free to email the team as well. So we've got the EYITT mailbox there. Um, and we do have at the moment, if you can, get your application in before the 10th of March. We are going to put all of those people forward for a guaranteed interview before we get to Easter, which will be absolutely fantastic. And we'll be able to keep on sharing things with you about the programme before you start in September. Um, you can also see on there that we've got our Twitter and our Facebook pages as well. So, Charles, if you're there, are there any questions in the chat box that need answering or have you been able to answer them as you're going along? I've been on Sorry, this. it's a bit noisy that... in the background. Uh, I've answered a few. There's a few more just come in. Uh, if this is the programme conducted online or is it through centre? Um, the training days are facilitated um, usually face to face. Um, there is an online option if you're in a remote area. Um, the observations carried out, there's usually five observations, but um, you may need further face-to-face -face contact, but it's kind of a blend between um, some online contact with your tutors and face-to-face -face training. What else have we got? Yeah, uh, we programs. also... Sorry, Helen. No, sorry, Charles. I was just going to add a little bit in there about the training day. So usually we create a separate group for Kids Planet. Um, so that, again, we can have you all together. So we're very much following Kids Planet approach, and that's linked in with the training sessions that we're delivering as well. But as Charles has said, we can have those in different areas of the country, depending on where you're based. And we do always record the sessions. So if for any reason you can't attend or you miss it, you won't miss out on that material. Another question uh, here from Georgia. The programme does start in September, early September. Um, we are planning on running a face-to-face -face interview day with Kids Planet. Um, Jill, I don't know whether you want to step in on this one. But, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm so, sorry, Georgia. Absolutely. Uh, someone um, mentioned about getting some experience in Kids Planet Nursery first. Absolutely. We would welcome that. Uh, if they're interested in coming and doing some voluntary work before then, then do get in touch. I've just put our um, uh, training email on the chat group as well. If anyone wants to do that, they can contact us through that as well. Okay. Um, the other questions I have answered, but one of the ones that comes up quite a lot is GCSEs. Uh, if you don't have your GCSEs, we do have um, a connection with equivalency testing, where it's quite a substantial discount on most of the others that are available. If you want further information from that, um, I'll put our EYITT inquiry line on the chat as well. 
um, and we will make this recording uh, available to those of you that have attended this. Yeah. Yeah, and again, there's lots of information on the website, and again, there is a webinar that you can watch on the website, which would give you similar information to what we've covered today. But if you've got any questions in terms of your qualifications, then please again use the EYITT email and people will be happy to get back to you and talk to you about your different options. Okay, has anybody got any other questions at all while we're all here? Okay, so yeah, everyone has uh, all the details. If you need to get in touch with any of the uh, Best Practice Network or um, Kids Planet, then please do get in touch. And uh, I'm hoping to hear from you soon. So thank you, everybody who's attended. And um, yeah, please, please do get in touch. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. And we'll look forward to hearing from you.